This is Ritesh Srinivasan and welcome to my channel. In this video, let's look at this interesting paper called PRISMER, a vision language model with an ensemble of experts. So the authors are from NVIDIA, ASU, Caltech and Imperial College London. So what is PRISMER? So the key idea over here is that it is an efficient, data efficient vision language model. It leverages diverse pre-trained experts through its predicted multimodal signals. It can perform vision language reasoning tasks such as image captioning and visual question answering. Okay, so that is the idea over here. So it is a vision language model which can take inputs as images, right? And then it can perform tasks like image captioning, visual questioning, answering. It makes use of something called as pre-trained experts. So what are these pre-trained experts? So here, you see over here, uh, from this image, one model will give details about the edges, other one about surface, other one about depth. Then another model about segmentation, basically the object segments, object detection, and OCR. Okay. So from an image, these features are taken and then given to a language model which can do image captioning or visual question answering. So that is the idea of PRISMER. Now why the name PRISMER? Uh, it is an analogy of an optical prism. Okay. So basically the idea is that PRISMER splits a single reasoning task into diverse domain specific reasoning. That is the idea over here. Okay. Now what does the model architecture look like? So here they have the model architecture, right? So it has a vision encoder and a language decoder. Okay. It has two main trainable components. One is a, you know, adapter. Okay. And other one is an experts resampler. So it follows this transformer architecture. Okay. And if you look at this transformer architecture, basically, the other weights are kind of frozen, okay. Uh, the majority of network weights are frozen during training, okay, which is your feed forward block, bidirectional attention block, right. These weights are frozen during training, uh, okay. And the trainable components are this adapter and an expert's resample, okay. So the vision encounter takes an image as an input and then uh, it is being sent to different experts, okay, like depth, normal, uh, object detection, right, segmentation, okay, and then, you know, this is the network architecture. For example, given this bear sitting on the grass, this is the text which is produced outside, okay. A little bit details on what are these experts, okay. So the backbone experts, the vision only and language only pre-trained models uh, for encoding t images and text into a meaningful uh, sequence of tokens. So this is, it follows the transformer architecture. Okay. The modality experts are, you know, from vision domain, encoding three low level vision signals, which is depth, surface, normals, and edge, three high level vision signals, object labels, segmentation labels, and text labels. The modality experts are treated as black box predictors. Their predicted labels are used as input for the PRISMER model. So basically over here, right? Predicted outputs of each of this is being used as an input. Okay. So uh, that is the idea over here, right? So what are the other things which, th these are the details of the modality experts. I'll not go into it. So for example, for semantic segmentation, they use mass to former. For object detection, they use UniDet. Okay. So these are the parameters of these backbone, uh, what do you call? Uh, the modality experts. Okay. So uh, then they talk about, you know, the adapter and experts resampler because these are the trainable components, right? So this is the experts resampler. Okay. What does it do? It takes multimodal features with variable length as input and outputs a fixed number of tokens via cross attention. That is the idea over here. The adapter has a residual connection to the input and two fully connected layers 
that down projects the inputs features to a smaller bottleneck and then up projects it that is the adapter now where do these two come into the picture so in the architecture they come over here okay so basically an image this is a vision encoder right so there is this rgb patchify which converts this image into patches which needs to be fed into this encoder transformer okay along with that you also need this you know different features coming from these different experts now they also need to be converted into the standard input format okay that is what the expert resampler does by doing some kind of attention over these features okay this adapter is uh, this part within the transformer block basically and you know that also performs a certain task these two uh, adapter and uh, the experts resamplers are trained rest of the transformer is kind of frozen during training okay so now the next question is what are these um, you know transformers basically okay and how is it trained so for training they train with a single objective to predict the next token auto regressively so given an image is an input it has to predict a caption or say for visual question answering the answer and it is trained using uh, the decoder has to actually predict the next token in an auto regressive fashion okay so that is the idea now what are the prismer models so they have introduced two models over here prismer and another variant prismer z so prismer z relies strongly on the power of strong backbone expert and is trained with zero modality experts okay it has the same architecture uh, design as original prismer but without the experts resampler that's the idea over here and uh, it simplifies the data inference process because it only requires rgb images making it applicable to wide range of applications and efficient whereas prismer is less efficient in data inference because the need for data processing on expert labels so both prismer and prismer z utilize vit pre trained by clip as the frozen vision encoder and roberta as the frozen language decoder okay within the vit and uh, roberta they have actually added these adapter blocks okay they have added this adapter blocks which are trained rest of the model is frozen that is the idea okay and the expert resampler say within vit in uh, prismer and in prismer z they don't have this expert resampler they only have this rgp patchify in prismer they have rgp patchify and experts resampler okay and the word embedding uh, over here that is for the decoder okay so let's go over here so that is about the model and if you look at the model details over here the prismer base has 980 million parameters totally out of which trainable para parameters are 160 million whereas prismer large has 360 million parameters which are trainable and 1.6 billion parameters and basically the layers in the transformer changes over here in the between the base and large okay so if you look at the base it's roberta base over here roberta large over here in prismer large right similarly vit large for prismer large vit base uh, for prismer base so this is the parameters okay and this is for the prismer z which doesn't have the uh, expert resampler okay now they have details of their performance over uh, say caption and visual question answering and they claim that this prismer and prismer z achieves superior performance compared to other visual language models with similar model sizes okay so that is the idea over here and they say that this model achieves competitive performance on par with other models which are trained with orders of magnitude more data magnitude more data okay that is what they have shown over here the performance right they also show zero shot image captioning and they say that this achieves state of art zero shot image captioning on coco caption and no caps data set basically these data set okay but it still underperforms some larger models that is what which have been trained on significantly more data that is what they claim over here so they have some examples of uh, zero shot captioning okay on this no caps data set okay so this is the original image these are the ground truth which says man in skydiving gear giving two thumbs up with skydivers okay 
So the Prismar base gives this particular thing as caption, man wearing a blue and purple jacket, man wearing a helmet and goggles with parachutes in the background. So what they say is that Prismar large produces more detail and semantically coherent captions than Prismar base, showing an understanding of fine grained object detection, rec object recognition and abstractions. They say these results are not cherry picked. Okay. There is another example over here. A new white car with door open in a showroom of people. Shiny white Mercedes car is shown on display. This is the ground truth. This is the original image which is given as an input. This is what the Prisma large says. A white Mercedes car on display at an auto show. This is quite accurate. Okay. So some more examples are present over here. Now if you look at uh, say the properties of Prisma, right? What if you have more experts, more domain experts, right? What they say is that with more experts, say the performance increases, but after some time the performance kind of saturates. Okay. So this more experts provide diversity of domain knowledge. Again, with better experts, okay, uh, the performance increases. The idea is that they corrupted some of these experts noise and then they tried it out. Not noisy experts, but corrupted depth expert by replacing a certain number of predicted depth labels. So they tried basically the quality of experts. Okay, the quality of modality experts in terms of features, in terms of uh, their predictions. That is what is this. So with better experts, you get better performance. Say with noisy experts, uh, this still maintains performance in including experts that predict noise. That is the idea. Adding noise can even result in a non-trivial improvement compared to training just on RGB images. That's what they are saying over here. So it is better to have some experts other than no experts. Okay. So then they talk about, uh, you know, uh, uh, here the effect of frozen backbones. Basically, freezing pre-trained parameters is essential for achieving strong performance and avoiding overfitting and catastrophic forgetting of the learned knowledge. So they kind of freeze the parameters of the network, right? Uh, frozen only the adapter and experts are trained. So that is what they talk about here. And here are some uh, limitations basically. So this cannot do in context learning because they have made use of a small language model. Okay. So uh, therefore it does not have the ability to perform few short in context prompting by design. Uh, the experts you know, we they inference on a pre-trained Prisma with a different segmentation expert pre-trained on a different data set uh, shows limited adaptability to different experts. So the experts are kind of uh, pre-trained, right, and frozen. So uh, that issue is there. So zero shot adaptation doesn't happen on new experts. That's what they are saying. Uh, and another thing is that uh, you need all experts, which they have included during pre-training. Uh, because if you uh, leave out one of the experts, then probably uh, the accuracy goes down. That's what they say. So you need all the experts. And in the current uh, design, they convert all expert labels into image like three dimensional tensor via modality specific post processing for simplicity. Okay, but there could be other efficient ways to, um, you know, represent expert knowledge. It could lead to stronger reasoning performance. That's what they are saying. Okay. So this was about Prismer, a model, a visual language model, which makes use of mixture of experts, domain experts, right? In this case, vision experts to extract different features and then feed it to a vision encoder and then uh, give that as an input to a language decoder to uh, do tasks like your visual, uh, what you call image captioning and visual question answering. So this is a uh, nice approach. So there is a lot of work currently happening on multimodal uh, language models whereby different approaches are being explored by different uh, research groups. So this is one of the approaches and they claim it to be data efficient. Okay. So they have also released the code. You can check it out. If you want, you can try replicating the code and see how it performs. Okay. So I hope this short video on Prisma is useful for you. If you like the video, please like, share, subscribe to the channel. I'll be putting the link of this paper and the GitLab link for Prisma in the description of the video. Do check out.